go into executive session. Motion. Um, Susan, I'm sorry, Susan, I meant Linda and Tony, thank you. Sorry. I just was on that side of the that side of the board for me. Okay, all well, those in favor, raise your hand. Yes, yes, and unanimous, wonderful. Thank you. All right, we are in executive session and who has it, Bob? Okay. Do we I'm need to, to move out button. of the executive? Do we need, no, we don't have to do no, that No, we don't anymore. vote, we just come out. No. the meeting. Hello, ladies, oh, Teresa. Hello. I don't know who that is that came in. There's Teresa. Yeah, Teresa, I know. Amy, and I don't know who this third person is. Dawn is our cafe uh, cafeteria and our shared cafeteria service. Yeah, Dawn's our food service okay. director. Dawn Parsons. Ah, good. So I'll we'll have your names visible. Ah, I see when I move my... Um, pointer over it, it doesn't. Okay, so we're going to begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Now that we're back, Jane, can, everybody. On, we, can you share your screen, please? Yep. Oh, tell me you have a big flag. Oh, oh nice. There we go. All right. Oh, nice. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, United States, States, of States of America and to the Republic. And to the Republic for which it which stands, stands, one nation. Day. Under God, Under God, indivisible, indivisible with, liberty with liberty and justice, and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. <coughs> all right, moving right along. We are now moving to public comments. Do we have any public comments from anyone? You're just here to observe. Very good. Okay, so now we're going to move to number six, which is the adoption of the consent agenda, consent agenda, which is the approval of previous minutes, um, psychiatric services award, accessing of um, equipment, and um, accept a donation from the business assistant grant. Mm -hmm. I need a motion. Ken, thank you. Um, Carol B, thank you. All those in favor, please do a show of hands. Thank you very much. We are now, that was unanimous, and we are now moving to financial matters. The claims audit report. Um, I need, that's just informational. I'm sorry, it's just informational. Does anyone have a question on it? It was, um, it just seemed like there was a lot this month. Was there any reason we're back? Is it? Is there anybody new? Or okay. Susan, Sue, you bring up a good point. And I'm going to take this moment um, to, Bob and I were talking about this and Bob and Susan had spoken about it. Um, Ken had a list of questions on it, of, uh, on a couple of things. And he sent them to Bob, myself and Susan. So he knows the answers, I know the answers. And that was one of the questions. Moving forward, it would probably be easiest if you have questions and you send them, even if you're sending it to me, unless it's something of a private and personal nature, if you would share your questions or your commentary with the rest of the board, then we don't have to do things twice. But now, to, now Sue, we're gonna answer your question in a second. It was just my questions just no, that's yeah, right. I had the same, I had the same question. Yeah. Same questions all around. So Susan, could you yeah. could you address that? So yep, I actually everybody. just pulled up my, my summary that I Thank put you. together for Ken. So I'll just go over it really quickly. And I'm also um, forwarding it to everyone as well. So in, in reference to the claims audit report, the employee who put in the mileage from the prior year <clears throat> was spoken to. And actually, I actually reached out to that employee and found out that, you know, she really hasn't ever put mileage in, mileage in and was encouraged to. And so she didn't really <laughs> understand um, the timelines. And so now she knows that, you know, she has to do it within 60 days and um, definitely within the current fiscal year. The N95 fit testing was for two of our nurses, uh, two of our nurses who um, did not complete the fit testing last June when it was scheduled. And so the new dates in September were identified. 
and the PO was not entered before those two individuals went down um, for their N95 fit testing. Um, the cell phone, uh, cell phone bill adjustment for the cur uh, courier, that really should be listed at $12 in my opinion. Um, the cell phone account used to be managed by Donna Bright, who had set up um, phones. We only have um, five phones, BOCES um, wide, and the plan for the courier was slightly different than the four other uh, phone plans that we have on account, and we're not sure why. But when you compare the former plan to the plan that the phone was moved to, the BOCES is paying $12 less per month. So I, I don't really think it's a fair reflection uh, to list it as $65.77 a month. Um, we moved the responsibilities of cell phone management over to Rob Kosh, and so he and I have discussed implementing a routine to just review our phone plans and make sure that they're consistent. Um, the quality restaurant repair, normally we have a blanket PO. It was an oversight in CTE. Um, that had to do with one of the ovens, so it was repaired. So they will put a blanket in and um, we'll be mindful of that. So that was an oversight on their part. Um, I'm still waiting for some information on the purchase order um, at the Dollar General, but again, it was an after the fact PO. So again, it was an oversight. And just then so, this just so everybody knows a blanket PO, when she said it was a blanket, that's when we, we put a purchase order in for a set amount of money to, be, to buy various things from um, a given vendor over the course of the year. So like we have a blanket PO with Yawn Company and Home Depot and those kind of places because we never know when we're going to have to run down and get, you know, a box of screws or something else. And so that gives us the ability to run down and buy those kind of things without having to write a PO every single time we need some little item. So, so it's a placeholder that encumbers that amount, you know, say $1,000 that's set aside for those expenditures that pop up so that you know that you have the funds available. And then the last one is the Sullivan County School Boards Association invoice. So that invoice arrived billing our BOCES for 1,000 students, and Lori questioned the number of students at BOCES, um, which I believe is, a, is appropriate, but um, I'm going to talk to, to Lori about like working with Jean, you know, when those things come through, because really when they hit Jean and, and Bob's, you know, desk, those are questions that we can ask then. I don't really think it's a claims audit um, thing. I honestly think that it's a communication issue in terms of like, we probably should annually provide Sullivan County School Boards Association with our enrollment and probably other districts need to update their enrollment too. So I, I consider right. that more of a communication thing. And perhaps, you know, since we are not running adult ed and some other programs, you know, that's why our enrollment specifically is different. And okay. that's the summary. I think that, hope that answers everybody's questions. Sue, you're fine with that? Yeah, my question was not specific to any one thing. It was just, there seemed to be a lot yeah. of, it hit a lot. And I didn't know if it was because of our situation going on. Is there a different staff? Who knows? You know, or if you take out the two that really mm -hmm. probably weren't claims audit, more like internal reviews, it probably wouldn't look as bad either. Got it. All right. Well, thank you, everyone. We're going, and Susan, thank you for once again, putting that answer together. Um, 7.02 treasures report, it's an action item. So I need a motion. Can I have a motion please? Okay, Simi and Linda, thank you. I'm trying to hit everybody. Um, any comments or questions? Linda, I always look to you. Linda, is there, there's a problem with your audio. I, Mine? I, I'm having trouble with your audio. Am I the only one? I hear her fine. I hear her fine. Okay. Yeah, I'll speak it's a little louder. Top of the okay. Um, any questions on the treasurer's report? Did everybody get a chance to look at it? Yes. Okay. Then um, by a show of hands, uh, can I see who approves, please? If you are okay, a show of hands, it's unanimous. Thank you all very much. Moving on to personnel matters, 8.01. Okay, again, this is an action item. So I need a motion and a second. I'm losing you all. Okay, Carol Park, a motion, thank you. And Simi, I'll take a second, thank you. Um, any questions?
Everybody's fine with everything. No questions about anything. Okay, then a show of hands, please. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Again, it is unanimous. Thank you all very much. Moving down to policy review. All right. Um, this is a discussion item. We don't vote on it till next time. Um, anybody have a comment? Or we have a, a few more times before we vote on it. This oh, just the do. initial look at it. Oh, so we have two more times then. We yes. should vote on it in January. Yeah, I just yeah. want to I, make a mention that I, Ken, I'm losing everybody. All right, Ken, hang on a minute because we're going to ask. I'm going to ask you to speak in a minute. I, I can. All right, Ken had raised several questions on the uh, policy. Um, again, I will circulate his the answer that I sent to him to everyone else. Um, these policies are vetted by Erie policy service and their attorneys. Um, these policies are designed to protect the organization. These policies, unfortunately, are written in legalese. And that oftentimes makes them very cumbersome and difficult to understand and interpret. But I told Ken in my response that I would send his concerns to them for comment, and we in turn will share that with everyone once we receive it. What we're doing is we're finishing up the work that we did over the summer with the policy committee. Jean is probably a little more than halfway through the, the final work she needs to do with it before it's brought to the whole board. But simultaneously, new policies will be coming up that need to be added to the document. That's a work in progress. So what we've decided at each board meeting, we're going to have a standing policy agenda item. Now, there may be something to discuss, there may not be, but we're going to leave it um, as a opportunity for us to discuss and review either existing policies or new policies. Ken, so, were you uh, able to hear that? Ken, yes. you were able to we hear that? To, we have to do it. Yeah, yeah, I could. Okay, great, great. So I'm going to turn around and share my answers to Ken that he raised, and you'll, I already sent you the question, so you'll see what the question was. And uh, going forward, because we just noticed um, Ken was having a problem with his email, so he wasn't emailing us from the address we expected. But going forward, anytime a board member asks a question, we're going to hit reply to all of you so you know the question that was asked, and you have the same information we're sharing or whatever one, so we don't have to, not that we mind repeating it, but it will make it a little uh, more streamlined. That's <clears throat> Rob, do you okay. also want to mention that this is going to come and go from only your BOCES email, not your personal emails. If yes, you have a problem with your BOCES email and you can't get it to work, that <laughs> you can use your own email to notify Bob, who do you want them to notify? Rob Koch? They can notify me. And they can I'll, notify I'll me. Up. Rob. Why don't we let Bob decide the answer to the question? Send it who to me. Send it to Bob if you're having an issue. Okay? So okay. that would be the best way to do it. So if you have an issue, send it to Bob. But in all other cases, just because of the public information ability mm -hmm. to, you don't want them in your personal emails. So please use your BOCES email and please check your BOCES email. Um, how many of you run, a, any of you run a Mac? An Apple computer? No. Well, you do. Because you can it's add an that. IPad. IPad. Yeah, same thing. You can add mm -hmm. that Gmail to your account. Same I thing. I have it no on my problem. phone. Yeah, if you're running anything that's Apple, I know you can add it. To another another email account, which yeah. is your BOCES account. You know, I don't know about anything but Apple, so I won't even try to. Did anyone it. have any other comment on the Title IX policy? Not um, yet. Nobody. I think you'll all find it interesting when you read Ken's mm -hmm. uh, commentary. Um, moving right along then, because this was just discussion, we will bring it back. Linda, I'm, I, I'm, my, my audio 
You just went out again, Ken. I, I'm not get. I can't get audio. I'm getting just wobbles. You I, 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 like I can't that. understand what I'm saying. Ken, do you have a headset you can plug into your computer? Uh, I don't. Talking? No. Okay. I don't. I'm sure it would be wobble too, but uh, about half of what you are saying, I'm not getting. Ken, can you call in to Rob again tomorrow? I will. Yeah, and let's see if we can fix that. And if you want to try it out, you know, you and I can go back and forth and zoom and see if it works or Rob will hey, do it for you. Can I know. A, a suggestion, turn your video off and you, it may improve your audio. See, it, just turn off your video and see if that helps. How do I do that? Cam, how do I turn off the... You go up to the three off? dots, the three dots on the top. Three. Oh no, that's not letting you do it. No, it, there's, you no. should have, no. you should just bring your, no. you just bring your mouse. Your screen. On the bottom of the screen, there's a thing that says... It's just, you should see icons oh. that say mute and stop I, I, video. I can't. Ken, the bottom of your screen, wait. Bottom left. Yep. Stop. stop video. Yeah. Stop video. Okay. All right. Does that improve All right. the audio? Didn't do a thing. The audio is still wacky. Kathy's yeah. hand is still in the air. All right, Ken. <laughs> make do as you can. I think we need to get your computer in and take a look at it. All right. We're going to move right along, unfortunately. Yeah, if I, if I have to drop out, I will. Okay. We're moving to- Kathy's hand is still in the air. <laughs> okay, hang on a second, I have to go back. Okay, we are moving on to policy. Oh, we just did that, I'm sorry. Number 10, bid award of the 10 modular classroom additions, partial roof replacement in the E-Wing project part two and that is an action item. I need a motion to open this up. Thank you, Tony, and thank you, Kathy. Okay. So, questions. You've got all the people here that can answer them. And by the way, if you wanna write your questions down on your, um, you can do it on, on, on board docs, just like you could the other way. Or you can write them on a piece of paper. So everybody's fine with that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then we need to take a vote. I have a question, Linda. Yes. I was trying to unmute. <laughs> um, Susan, the, the bid specifications that were um, identified with, with the dots, you know, the, the different items on the top that each contractor needed, were those important things? Because when I looked at um, the David Goldstein, it didn't appear that he had met everything everybody else had. We had to go back and um, make sure that he acknowledged and had received the addendum. Some of that information went out at the last minute. Um, <clears throat> so we had one contractor actually send us an email and acknowledge that. And I taped that to the envelope so that they had it for the bid opening. So if we didn't have that information, the architects had to go back and, and confirm that. But our architects did go back and confirm that all of those um, documents were signed and okay. It um, did say that, but. Yep. So we're, we're all set. I have to say that we have not had 11 bidders on a capital uh -huh. project That's in a, a lot. decade plus. So we were ecstatic. Um, with the response to have 11 contractors. And if you looked at the bid tabulation sheet, you could uh, see that several of them were local. Very and close. The two bidders were very close and we're both local. So not only is it exciting to have the project come in under budget, um, but that a local contractor will be completing the work. So we're very Where's, pleased. Where is he from? Woodburn. Um, actually, yes, Woodburn. Okay, thank you. I don't, I don't see any addresses on mine. Maybe just you're talking about identifying people by name. I don't see addresses. Okay. The address for that individual, I think is actually 
was it listed? Yeah, it was listed in the actual <laughs> resolution, Sue, because that was the lowest bidder. So that's why um, oh, I'm sorry. That address. the other contractors did not have addresses I listed. In I, the I apologize. I didn't see it there. Thanks. No, it's okay. I was looking Thank at you. And, and just as a refresher, this is for half of the E-wing roof because the other half of the roof was done about 18 months ago as an emergency project when the wind blew part of the shingles off. So this is to make that roof whole so that the whole roof is redone in a timely um, or close as close as possible that we could get to the time frame of the original okay. repairs. Good. Will we get it done soon? We did this so that it had to be done by the middle of, of May, which is very interesting as we're talking about some capital project planning of, you know, the timing of doing fall bids now for like as contractors are um, gearing up for next year. Um, I think that's probably another reason why we had so many people and it was competitive. Susan, we'll, should, or do you anticipate we'll be fine with the half of the roof of the E-Wing that is on, on this bid sheet? I don't think I understand the question. You said that this was only for half the E-wing roof. Right, because we did the other half about the other half months ago so as an emergency project. Right, and you think this half that we're going to do will hold through the winter just fine? Oh yeah, I think we'll be fine. I mean, right. that I was my question. Say, yeah. I don't have a crystal ball. If we had a huge windstorm, anything's possible anywhere, as we all know. But you know, who knows? If we get some really warm, you know, weeks in December, there's nothing that prevents this company from coming in and doing the work as long as it doesn't disrupt instruction. So we're open to their schedule. Excellent. And they're aware of that. Yes. Great. Any further questions? Okay, we need to take a vote. We started that, but we didn't get there. All those in favor of the bid, please raise your hand. Once again, it is unanimous and I thank you all. Um, and the second part of this 10.02 is the discussion of the NISBA convention. I would like to open that discussion by saying, I was fine with it being a Zoom meeting. I thought it went well. I was perfectly happy. I thought I could see more things than I would have been able to see if I had been there. That That's said, you, I went to, I did the uh, resolution session. That was the only thing I did. I didn't do the convention, but they handled it very well. It was um, very, it was informative. There are always people, there's a few people that are NISBA um, delegates that like to take control of things. And I thought, oh, wow, this is going to be great. They're not going to run up. They don't want to be seen. They, the same people still <laughs> took, over, took it over. <laughs> it was too funny. But um, it was very well done. They kept it, they kept it timed. Jay Warona is wonderful with his, um, with his commentary and um, uh, most of the resolutions, there wasn't a lot of discussion in the resolutions passed. There is a, a summary that came over the email. I don't know if everybody saw it, but I can see if I can forward it to everybody. That'd be great, Sue, thank you. Anyone else can, did you send your, if, I'm not gonna ask Ken this, but Ken wrote a rather extensive, Yes, he did. Did, he, did everybody else get it? Yes. yes. Okay, good, good. I just wanted to make sure. That's one of those things that's really nice if we can all see it together. Anyone else comment? I would Anyone? just add, Linda, Please. that I, 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 maybe I'm not, am I muted? Do you no, hear me? Or? No, you're okay. You're okay. Uh, I found this a good way to have a convention. Uh, uh, you, 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 none of it, so often you go to a convention and you run to a room and there are no seats left. Well, that didn't happen here. Uh, we didn't need to spend uh, 150 or $200 a night for a hotel. That's right. Uh, I came away thinking this is the method we should use in the future and save taxpayers probably hundreds of thousands of dollars. But Ken, they don't make any money that way. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> I agree with you, Ken, 100%. I loved it. I have yeah. to say, though, there's something to be said about networking when you get there, because I've, I've met other school board 
members, you can sit next to somebody that you've never met before and they might be a similar size school or different. I mean, there's lots of things. I do too. Have, have that yeah. personal reaction. I think that is very important. And especially Carol's face is up here. When we when we go and get to meet our other county board members in a in a situation like this, I think I I've gained a lot from that. Yeah. I um and I didn't I do like the wine and cheese. Well, <laughs> all right, Carol Park, go ahead, sweetie. I didn't go because I had a, a dietetics conference, a national dietetics conference at the same time. And I found that very disappointing. I, I well, my problem was I, it was such a wonderful agenda, but life got in the way. And there were, I, I only did a few things because I, you know, the phones ring, everything's going on. And I didn't dedicate that time just to that. It was too difficult to do that. So I'm not really happy with, with Zoom conferences. But one of the things I liked about this Zoom conference was that if you wanted to go back and hear something you yes. couldn't attend, right. you could go. Because right. sometimes there were three things I wanted to see right. at the same time. Yes. But so I really liked that. I, I like that too. Yeah. Anyway, moving right along, Administra that was only a discussion item. Um, administrative reports. Anyone got anything they want to say that hasn't been said? Susan, Bob, Keith? I'm I have the items there, that girls. I Natasha, have my report Mark, to you, Linda. Pardon? My report? Go ahead. Okay, so I sent it out a little late today, but there's a couple of items I wanted to touch on that uh, I want you to be aware of. Uh, most importantly, and Simi probably is already aware of this, but I was informed last night. Um, I'm not gonna go into the whole micro cluster scenario that we're operating under with regards to schools, but suffice it to say that um, we've been watching the statistics in the county very carefully because our biggest fear is that certain areas of our county could wind up in a yellow zone. And under the new governor's protocols, if a school district finds itself in a yellow zone, they're required to test 20% of their in-person faculty, staff, and students. And as of last week, our county did not have the capacity to do that. And that was a bit worrisome for many uh, of our superintendents because it basically meant that if we wound up in a yellow zone or part of our county wound up in a yellow zone, we would have no choice but to close and go remotely for 14 days. So I was very happy last night when I received a phone call from Nancy McGraw, the director of public health in the county, uh, informing her, uh, informing me that discussions that we'd been having and we have been going to help the county public health department and myself had finally come to fruition and between Garnet and the county, they received 5,500 rapid tests. And part of those tests are being earmarked for use by schools. The county has entered, entered into an MOU with Garnet Health. Garnet Health will provide the teams that could be dispatched to schools in yellow zones to conduct the actual testing. This would negate the need for the school districts to become licensed as labs and to train staff to collect the test samples. So this is a big change in what's happened in this county in the past 48 hours. The fact that we now have that capability. I shared this with all of our superintendents last night. And for the most part, very most of them were uh, very relieved to know that we do have this capacity. Um, most of the uh, thanks goes to uh, Garnet. Uh, because they're, uh, as a community service, making their staff available uh, to conduct this testing if it's needed. Also, Sullivan Boses is partnering on a project that I've shared with you before um, with Rolling V Bus Corp, Sullivan 180, and Assemblywoman Aileen Gunter's office. Rolling V had approached me a couple of weeks back with the idea of retrofitting one of their buses and to turn it into a remote learning platform that could be situated in a district so that on their remote days, parents of children that did not have a stable or reliable internet connection or did not have access to a computer could arrange to go to the bus and use a computer on the bus to do their remote studies. So Phil Vallone and his son Nick are working on gutting and retrofitting the bus 
our uh, building trade students in CTE and our welding students in CTE are building the frames and the workstation tops that will be installed by Phil's crew on the buses. I was able to get $7,000 donated from Assemblywoman Gunther's office towards the project. And that money was turned over to Sullivan 180, who is partnering up with us on the project. And that will, money will be used to buy the computers to install on the bus. Still a lot of logistics to work out, but it's a small positive step. We're doing it as a pilot. If it proves to be successful, Phil is willing to uh, retrofit other buses uh, to provide and fill this void and this need. I also represent the school districts of the county on the Sullivan County Opioid Task Force. I attended one of our meetings yesterday and they've reorganized the structure. It's a little different. The committee I sit on now is focused solely on education and not so much us as educational institutions, but educating the public on the opioid crisis in the county. Um, Simi can attest to this. Our county is quite up there in the numbers throughout the state in uh, opioid hospitalizations and opioid deaths. And the county and the task force has been working diligently and they wanna work hand in hand with our schools to start providing Narcan training uh, many of the schools have trained their nurses, have trained their security personnel, their administrators, their coaches. Uh, the county wants to go beyond that and start training teachers and even training students. So one of the ideas we hit upon is we're all familiar with the AED boxes we're required to have in our schools now. The defibrillator boxes, that was mandated by law. Well, they actually have a Narcan box. And what the committee hit on as an idea is we're looking to raise the money to provide one of these Narcan boxes to every one of our school buildings in the county so that it can be mounted on the wall in a central location near where the AED is in case of need. And the county will fill them with the kits and the county will provide the training at no cost for anyone in the school district who wishes to be trained in it. The cost of the box is a $6,300 and I'm working with the local service clubs to raise that money. So it's not coming from taxpayer money or it's not coming from the county. And the goal is to provide one of these boxes and I sent you in the report an image of what it looks like to be installed uh, in all of our school districts. And finally, last month, we had some questions concerning um, attendance and engagement, if you remember. And I provided you with a summary. Um, we have prepared some slides that I'm gonna ask Maria to walk us through. But what I wanna explain is there is a difference between attendance and engagement. And Ken can speak to that. Just because somebody is sitting in a classroom doesn't mean they're actively engaged in what's going on. So what we decided is we're gonna split this into two presentations, one a short one, which we're going to do now, and one a longer one we're going to do in December. What we're gonna to do tonight is discuss the attendance portion of this. And we took a couple of snapshots over the last several months. And those snapshots include our attendance in our hybrid modality on each day of the week, our attendance in our remote modality on each day of the week, and those figures compared to previous years of regular non-pandemic attendance. That's the portion we're going to talk about tonight. In December, Natasha and her staff and the teachers are working to showcase some of the efforts to engage the students in our remote environment. We're going to take you on a tour of several of our teachers' Google Classrooms, show you the lessons, show you the platform, show you what each of them are doing. We're going to try to get a few of the teachers that are in different subject areas so you can get a feel for what it is that they're presenting to the students and to give the board the opportunity to ask the teachers some direct questions as to the engagement, what's going on and what they're doing. So with that, Natasha, I'm going to bring the presentation up on my screen. And I wanna make sure I get the right one. I think that's it. Let me see something. 
Does everyone see the presentation on their screen? Now I do, yeah. Okay, yeah. Just, just give me a minute because I don't see it on mine because I'm working off of two different computers. I got to get my mouse down back here. So we're going to, uh, where is view? We're going to go in presentation mode. So that's slide one, Maria, correct? That is slide one, yep. Can everybody okay. hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So this is um, a compilation of the attendance oh. from 2017 oh. to the present. Um, if you look at, uh, there's a couple of things that um, probably need explaining first about the one, two, three, four, five, the sixth column over, it says possible aggregate attendance which is pupil days. And what that is, is um, our student management system takes the attendance every single, well, it takes the enrollment every single day of the year and adds it all up. So by the end of the year um, in 2018, we had 120,110 possible student attendance days. Um, there were, by the end of the year, 21,849 absences. So that means that we actually had 98,261 attendance days, which comes out to about 82% attendance. Okay. I'm a little confused about that. Okay. We think of a year as 180 days or 185 days. I'm not sure how, can you help me out with that? Yeah, because um, let's just say the year has 10 days. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. On, on one day, we might have 200 people who are enrolled, and on the next day, ah. we might have 250. Okay, I understand. I missed that piece. Thank you. Yep. Anybody else have questions about that? That It took me a while to, to figure that out, too. <laughs> um, all right, so you can see that over time, 27-18 was about 82%. 18-19 uh, was 82%. Last year, which is only through March, because we did not record attendance in school tool or report it to the state after the shutdown on March 16th, I believe. Mm -hmm. um, and so through when we stopped reporting attendance, we had 84% attendance rate. Um, so this year, so far for the first 26 days of school, we're down about 10%. So it's 73%. And you can see this, the bottom, um, the bottom part of the chart breaks down between hybrid and remote. So the students that come two days a week um, have about a 75% attendance rate. And the students that are 100% remote, meaning they're learning completely from home, are a little bit lower at 72%. So does anyone have questions about this chart or um, about what you're seeing. I'm good. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And this is just a, a bar graph of. Um, hold on, hold on. I didn't realize it was going into. Could you go backwards? Yeah. yeah. No, right, it thanks. went into auto mode. I'm sorry. That's fine. So this is just a bar graph showing the information that was on the other slide. Slide that we had slightly better attendance through March of last year. Um, than in the previous two years before, and we're down about 10% at 73% this year, so far. All right, so this was um, a week back in October. And um, so the, the top row is cohort A. Those students come to school face-to-face -face on Mondays and Tuesdays. Um, then they're remote the rest of the week. And it's broken down by program. Um, so you can see in the blue column, that's the number of students that are registered, that were registered for that week. And um, as you go across the, the days that are going across, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, um, you can see for cohort A on Monday, there's about 85%. Cohort B on, or cohort A on Tuesday is about 81%. And then, um, and this is a trend that kind of remains true through the chart. On the remote days, it's slightly less of a percentage of attendance. So 
Um, Wednesday is 100% remote day for every student in the school. Um, and our attendance was about 77%. And then Thursday and Friday are 78 and 75%. In general, we do find that on the remote days, um, attendance is a little bit lower. Um, we also find that Fridays attendance is a little bit lower. Um, so the, the middle column is cohort B. So they are at home on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday. And then they come to school on Thursday and Friday. And you can see whereas cohort A was at 85% because they're in school face to face. Um, when this week, particular week, cohort B started out with just 66% attendance and then 78, 75. And it went up a little bit when they became face-to-face -face on Thursday and Friday, it was 79 and 79. I just wanna jump in there, Maria, just so you know, the attendance is taken in a Google Meet every morning. So all of our remote students are required to participate in a Google Meet with their teacher or a teaching assistant. Google Meet is a Google version of Zoom. And that's kind of where the teacher goes over the instructions for today, what the lesson is going to be, the work and projects that they're gonna be working on remotely. But most importantly, that's when they take the attendance for their class. Unlike the spring, we are required to report attendance for in-person days and remote days as well. So we needed to put a mechanism in place that permitted us to do that. And a morning Google Meet is what the teachers use to accomplish that task. Thank and, you, Maria. Okay, um, I just want to piggyback that on a little bit. If, if a student doesn't show up in the Google Meet, the teachers and TAs do reach out to them to find out if they had technology issues or what the issue was and so um, if they're able to connect with the students and solve that either connection problem or get them to participate in some way, um, then that can count for attendance as well. So you don't get penalized necessarily because you know, your internet's not working that morning or something. They, they do what they can to reach out and connect with the students in some other way. Yes, Maria, Lynn. Maria, on in a normal, and, and I, you may, I know you showed in other slides, but in a normal life of school, like October of last year, mm -hmm. would our averages of attendance been this low? Um, well, no, you can see from, from the first slide that in, yeah, I can't and, see for the year, it's, it's about 84%. I don't know day by day. I, we could go back and figure it out. I, I, it, it was purely yeah. curiosity. <clears throat> that same time period, I, I would love to know. You know, I'm just wondering. You know, overall, what reality wonder, it's, about, it's about 10% less. And what we're seeing is the in person days, we're seeing more and more attendance as the year progresses because our figures now, and that's the last slide, are up in the low 80, 84% range but the remote days are about 10% less than the in-person days. Thank you. So I'm gonna to go to the last slide, Maria. Yep. And so the configuration of this chart is the same as the previous one. Um, this is November, first week of November. So a couple weeks ago, last week, I, I, it's all running together to me, so it's <laughs> work. Um, but you can see, as Dr. DeFore said, the attendance is up a little bit um, for cohort A for the in-person. Um, and again, if you look toward the end of the week for cohort B, that's the middle column. If you look over on Thursday and Friday, it's at 83 and 78. And we said earlier, Friday is a tough day. Um, in general, attendance is a little bit lower on a Friday. But um, again, they're doing better face-to-face -face with attendance um, than on the remote days. Um, Can we get a copy of this? Sure. That'd be great. I'm gonna have Jean convert it into a PDF and we'll send it out to you uh, tomorrow morning, okay? That would be great, thank you. 
Before I stop sharing my screen, any questions on the information? Okay. Got you, Bob, you have something else there? Bob, do you have yes. anything else? Nope, nope, that's it, sorry. Okay, no problem. I'm just trying to get the screen back so I can see it. Oh, okay. Anybody have any questions about anything? Because we're coming to an end here. So, okay, um, I'm going to, I'm not going to go around the, the list. Oh, I, I have one question. Simi, maybe you can answer this. What's our, what are our county stat, COVID stats looking like? Well, as of now, we've had two deaths. One gentleman did have cancer and he was in bad shape. But we're, we started doing the numbers again in October. Over the summer, we had four people. So since October, when we started our new list, we've right now, since October, we've got up to about 1,800 people. And a little birdie has told me that the governor sees all of this and his committee is really getting into his head about shutting us down again. Well, they just set the courts down again. Mm -hmm. Orange mm -hmm. County. Orange County has really put a put us on the map because they exploded. And it's and he knows too, um, it's no secret that our Jewish population, they'll go from Orange County to Sullivan County, back to New York City, back to Orange County, back to Sullivan County. And there's no way of, of stopping that in the town of Fallsburg. We've got, as you can see today, you, you may not see today, but Gombo's Bakery is still open. He's now has really? a year round permit because we do have a lot of people who are staying up here and are gonna stay up here when he put in his, when he started with the first nine zip codes and restricted their you know, minions. So we had none of those restrictions up here. So they came back up here just to pray. Simi, I thought that their COVID reports go back to their actual residences in Brooklyn though. That's only if everybody tells the truth. Uh-huh. There was a suspicion over the summer, Linda, that, um, and Simi, you can confirm this because you probably heard the same thing, but uh, allegedly somebody or an entity in Sullivan County was conducting tests during the summer months when our population increased and those results were shared directly back with the uh, proprietors of the camps and not with the health department. Wow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> See me that 1800 number is that positives in the county or is that hospitalizations? Well, that that's it's it's a running list. Yeah. So who have been on and have gotten off, but that's what we've had since October. And the number okay. positive for yesterday was 125 in the county. 127, excuse me. So there was just to fill you in there, you know, there was a problem. The health department was at the casino yesterday. So th they have mm -hmm. some issues there. Um, the Liberty Diner had some issues. Mr. G's restaurant had some issues. Ideal Snacks is still having issues. Um, the church there in Liberty, they, they were really across from McCabe's. They really had an issue. So we actually had to shut that church down. So Thanksgiving is going to be a real test and I've, we've still, <laughs> the district attorney's office and all of law enforcement are still trying to figure out how we're going to tell people that they can't have more than 10 people in their house for Thanksgiving and how we're going to resolve that issue or even try to do anything about it is, I'm still confused. Is Fallsburg the hotspot in the county? No, Liberty and Monticello, they're the hot oh. spot. And Liberty more so than Monticello. Um, the North Rockland School District announced earlier today that they are going to be closed from the Monday before Thanksgiving until January 19th and go fully remote as a precaution. 
I was on a call with some of the uh, SUNY deans earlier this afternoon, and apparently the whole Plattsburgh area is on remote instruction through January 15th. Wow. And a lot of a lot of schools are heading in that direction because they know what's going to happen for Thanksgiving. Sure. Then they know what's going to happen for the, the the Christmas break. So after everyone parties and does whatever they do for New Year's, they figure 14 days after January 1st would be the safest time to bring people back into a school building. And one of our local districts has already talked about doing that yet but they have not yet announced that they're doing that. Interesting. Thank you, I guess. Yeah. It's kind of, how do you like something like that? <laughs> don't ask questions you don't want answers to. We need to know the answers. We can't put our heads in the sand. Anyone else mm -hmm. have a question at all or a commentary? Or, this is board commentary time. Carol. <laughs> Yeah, I just wanted to thank Bob and for all the people that shared so much information today. This was a, a very heavy information board meeting, a lot to take in, a lot to absorb, and, and, it, and it, the, the charts made it helpful. And I want to thank Bob for his representation of the BOCES out there in the, in the different committees. I love the idea of the Narcan training and the, being on the walls is a phenomenally great idea. So I'm just glad we're in all that. And I wanna thank everybody who's got their fingers in it. I, on the other hand, am quarantining at home and doing basically nothing. So I thank everyone who's doing a lot. <laughs> <laughs> well put. <laughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, um, I just wanna give you one last update on, um, oh my God, um, a soup eva super eval that we talked about and met about. Um, I'm going to get back to him this week. I understand I had conversations with Bob and he is not the slightest been interested in starting his part this year because he's got a few yeah. other things on his plate, which mm -hmm. I understand completely. However, I am going to approach them um, about seeing what kind of a deal we can make to kind of get access to it at some sort of a reduced rate for the remainder of the year so that maybe we can start looking at it and we can try it out, you know, that kind of thing. So I will keep you posted in a group email. So thank you. Your both thank you. Emails. Thank you. At that, I, I, Kathy's, yeah, Carol, you need something? I'm, yes. by, I'm waving goodbye. Sorry. Wait, you can't so wave goodbye. This is Kathy's turn. <laughs> Carol Clark wants to talk. I am so grateful to Rob for fixing my computer. I apologize to everyone that whatever happened, um, I don't think I was alone. I think Kathy said she had an issue too. I had a big issue. So I think that it was systemic, but I'm, I'm glad it's fixed. Send, the, send all those emails, Linda. <laughs> I'll send them to you again. No problem. All right, Kathy, you're on. All right. I make a motion to adjourn the meeting. <laughs> seconds it. Carol seconds it. All those in favor, raise Aye. your hand. Happy One Thanksgiving. Have a great Night. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, Happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Everyone. Yep. Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, thank you. everybody. Keith, thank you. you. Maria, Natasha, and Bob, of course, thank you. Bye, guys. And Jean, thank you. Bye. Bye, everyone. Goodbye.